Following last season's Europa League victory, we were given £30 million to improve a team ready for our first season in the Champions League. In order to be ready for the Champions League, we needed to bring in a proven striker to the club. Lorenzo Luca had been picked up by Manchester United and Kareem Adeyemi had moved to Real Madrid. Benjamin Sheshko was still available at Salzburg and we really thought about putting a bid in for him, but in the end we chose to grab Wonder Kid Javi Company from Real Madrid on a free transfer following the expiry of his contract and save the money to sign some other Wonder Kids. Which is exactly what we did. We picked up Eric Jorge for £7 million from Brazilian side Goyas and then left wing back Juan Jose Luis for £10 million from Cadiz. Both of these players were later renamed to Ronaldo de Jesus and Enrico de Angelo. But now the youth have been brought in, we had to bring in some more established players and we broke our record transfer fee, bringing in Emmanuel Motika for £16 million from Red Star Belgrade to improve the left wing. And after adjusting our budgets, we also had the funds to bring in Andrea Cambiasso from Relegated Genoa for £7 million. Armed with our new signings, we were ready to take on the new season and test ourselves against the Champions League winners, Liverpool, in the European Super Cup. Wolfdog, hello mate, good to see you. How are things with you you joined us at the right time it's the uh it's the uefa super cup and we're one nil down sadio mane still obviously has not gone to buy munich in uh, in this and he's just scored a great goal to put them two up oh let's not concede another one please it's a poor pass from busio they're looking for rooney or is it a poor run from rooney i don't know either way liverpool are coming forward mane's through forced out wide but does get a ball back across towards Mohamed Salah, and Salah rarely misses from those situations. Okay, maybe Liverpool are a little bit better than the regular opponents that we face off against each week in Serie A. At least we're going to get the season off to a flying start. Five in a... Five... Five league games? Oh god, it is five league games. Five league games played, zero wins. We weren't exactly helped with Motika's 93rd minute winner against Parma was judged to be offside by the narrowest of margins, but with just three points and zero wins from our first five games, we now have a Champions League group stage to contend with. We were a first seed following our Europa League win from last season, but it didn't make the group any easier as we were drawn against Barcelona, Marseille and Feyenoord. But in our first game against Barcelona, this happened. Rooney into Brenner. Brenner. Finds Rooney. Rooney, can he get a ball in the middle? He can. Busio's there and Busio. Um, obviously, Barca um, give the ball to Brenner. Brenner makes it two. Forward to Motika. One touch into Brenner. Brenner plays it back in towards Busio. Back to Motika. And Nemanja Motika gets his first goal for the club. We followed that result up with a 0-0 draw away to Marseille and a 3-1 win at home against Final to put us top of the group. But when final beat us 3-2 at their place to go top of the group themselves, we panicked. Luckily, the Dutch side were on fire, beating Barcelona as we romped home to a 4-0 win against Marseille to ensure we qualified second in our Champions League group. But as the good times began in the Champions League, they rolled on over into the Serie A season. 19-year-old Javi Company was keeping established striker Brenner out of the team as he scored six goals in six games as we won against sides such as Benevento, Sampdoria and Salernitana all teams in the previous seasons that we had really struggled against. Heading into the winter break, things were looking really good for us and our target was increasingly looking like it should be top four by the end of the season. As the players waved in 2025 at their New Year's parties, two of our players had extra special reasons to celebrate. Gianluca Busio beat out Alfonso Davies and Weston McKinney to win the North American Player of the Year, while the player with the greatest name in football, Cy Brass, won the European Golden Boy Award before promptly accepting a contract offer from Cologne, who are a much worse team than we are a few days later, after they triggered his release fee clause of just £10 million. He went on his way, and we lost our golden boy. At least the Magic Ass helped him to the highest Bundesliga finish since 2017. But the transfer gave us an extra £10 million to spend, and the board, very kindly, gave us another £10 million to spend after we gained so much prize money from our Champions League group stage endeavours. January was a tough month though, with games against Roma, Lazio, Juventus and Inter Milan. Despite a win against Roma, we had to rely on late goals from Motika and company to secure draws against Lazio and Inter, and despite taking a lead twice against Juventus, we lost 3-2 to the runaway league leaders. Deadline day was approaching fast, and if we wanted to sign Sheshko, we had to move fast. The issue was, he'd just signed a new deal with Salzburg with a £34.5 million release fee clause. We had to raise an extra £14 million if we wanted to buy him. 
So goodbye, Brenner. Enter Fiorentina offering £20 million to bring Brenner to Serie B to help with their promotion push after being relegated last season. We accepted, taking £15 million in profit on Brenner and made the move for Sheshko. 24 hours after arriving at the club, Sheshko was on the bench for the AC Milan game. After going 2-0 up, we thought it'd be a good idea to give him his debut in the 64th minute. 50 minutes later, we won a penalty, and what better way to mark your debut than giving the penalty to Sheshko and letting him score in front of the home fans on his debut. Up steps Benjamin then. Ladies and gentlemen, the Sheshko effect. This then kicked off a run of fraudulent form where Sheshko was by far the worst player on the pitch most games, bottling easy chances and failing to score. The worst part about this is that Salzburg didn't offer a 30 day money back guarantee clause in the contract, so we couldn't return Sheshko to Salzburg. In the end, we actually dropped him for Javi Company, who went on, by the way, to score an average of a goal every other game across the season, compared to Benjamin Sheshko's three in 15. The Champions League first knockout round pitches up against Real Madrid, who had a lethal attack of Mbappe, Adiemi, and Gabriel Jesus, while the defence was bolstered by Alaba, Bastoni, Militao and Rick Karsdorp. I think even he's shocked to be there. Four minutes into the game and wonder kid Roni Bargi had his ankle broken, leaving him injured for the rest of the season. But late on, Sheshko won the battle of the FM22 wonder kid strikers by redeeming his penalty miss and scoring his first goal for the club, a penalty. But moments later, Karim Adiemi scored at the other end of the pitch to make it 1-1 between the two wonder kids. But 1-1 was a solid result for us heading to the second leg in Madrid. And we had our secret weapon, Javi Company, the Real Madrid reject who left because he was frustrated straight at the club, he had a big point to prove to the fans in Madrid. But obviously we lost 3-0 as former Crystal Palace man Michael Elise, who Real Madrid bought for £17 million, opened up our defence. With the Champions League now over and Inter comprehensively beating us in the Coppa Italia semi-finals, we had to focus on the league and getting top four football. We were buoyed by the fact that Javi Company won the Next Gen Award and five of our other players, two of whom were out on loan at other clubs, were in the top 50. The news spurred us on as we recorded some massive wins, beating Sampdoria, Cagliari and Lecce all 4-0 all away from home, with backup central midfielder and left winger Alberto Malero going on a run of games that saw him return 4 goals and 7 assists in a 10 game run. Corner routines finally started to work for us as Leonidas and Papetti both started notching up some goals towards the end of the season and we eventually managed to secure ourselves a top 4 finish following Inter's loss to Benevento with 3 games to go in the season. But that wasn't the biggest bottle of the season by a long stretch. Juventus had been top of the table from game week 5 onwards and at one point had a 12 point buffer to second place. But as Lazio found form at the end of the season, Juventus lost all semblance of how to play football, losing to Benevento, Udinese and Empoli and with it their Serie A title as Lazio clinched it on the penultimate day of the season. Now, up to this point, 99% of our games were played in a 4-3-3, but thinking ahead for next season, when we need Company and Cesco playing in the same team together, we tried a 4-2-3-1 where Company was a shadow striker in behind Cesco. And on the final day of the season, we welcomed newly crowned champions Lazio to Venice and went on to thump them 5-1, with even Sheshko ending up on the score sheet. And so in the end, we finished third with 80 points, our highest points total to date, and Champions League football confirmed for a second season. The board actually reduced our transfer budget to £27 million as they announced plans to build a new stadium and name it after a man who played a whopping total of 19 times to the club on loan back in the day. Not the man who won them the Europa League, made them an established force in Serie A and got back-to-back -back Champions League football.